In the spring of 1988, I embarked on a long journey documenting the human story of HIV and AIDS. Sydney, Australia, where we shot these images, was the first destination. I met and interviewed a dying AIDS patient for the first time in my life. Please tell me your name. My name is Lyle Taylor. You are dying of AIDS right now. Can you tell me about your situation? Yes. Um, I discovered that I was antibody positive four years ago. Today, through sort of circumstances yesterday and today, and through physical symptoms, I thought I was dying. But I can't find the switch to, to switch life off. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Good to see you, Professor Dwyer. Have you had a, a good morning? I've had an interesting morning. Well, that's very good. He is, he is, as is the case with so many of these young people dying of this horrible disease, he's a source of inspiration to us. He, in, in his bravery, he's renewing our determination to come to grips with this thing. When you see uh, Lyle tell your patient, uh, now 25 years after I interviewed you, what do you think? When I see this patient, well, it, as I say, it brings back a flood of emotional memories and that perhaps the most, uh, uh, the frustration, the, the, sitting on that bed, I was feeling um, more like a, um, a psychologist and a, and a friend than uh, an immunologist, a scientist who was uh, bringing the latest and greatest things to my patient that would definitely help them, you know, and uh, that, that experience repeated time and time again was extremely difficult. Ten hours after I interviewed Lyle Taylor at Prince Henry Hospital, he died. This was at the peak of the AIDS epidemic in Australia. One's indicated here that a blue are positive. Those patients that have positive AIDS antibodies in their serum. What is which, your reaction when you see all this blue? When I see all these positives, it really does make me wonder why people in the community just aren't taking the precautions that they should be. Not only was losing my friends and things like that, dozens and dozens and dozens of friends and people I knew, acquaintances, but the fact that the gay community would just be wiped out. That was the sort of scenario that was not an unreasonable thing to, to say back then because we didn't have the knowledge. And I was going to do everything I could to make sure the Mardi Gras was protected and gay rights were advanced and my community was protected. Albion Street AIDS hotline, can I help you? We, through I, I suppose through our information unit and uh, publicity and media, we're trying to get across to the public just how serious a problem AIDS is. How did you get AIDS? I uh, borrowed the wrong syringe off the wrong person and uh, gave myself a dose of AIDS. Julie Bates organised the Australian sex workers in the Australian Prostitutes Collective, the first organisation of its kind in the world. She was also a devoted AIDS activist. Was this like uh, the really start of what you were doing with the yes, sex it was, it was probably a couple of years in, a couple of years in, but it was that brothel in Nevada that really uh, championed the cause of condoms not being a nego negotiable um, thing in brothels in Sydney. And now what are you doing now? Now I mean to go in to see the women which is what we wanted to do, always, to get past the front desk, to get to the, to the workers in the premises. People's lives were now on the line, Stefan, you know. We needed to, we were learning every day, as gay men were, as people representing injecting drug users, every day we knew that this virus was killing people. If any single member of humanity is infected, or affected, then it concerns us all. And that, I think, is the message of AIDS. We are all involved, we are all concerned. It's a challenge to humanity and it must be seen as that. When we agreed really to tackle HIV AIDS as a community and that's what we did. We, we tackled it in, by being united and, and we never really wavered in that approach.
I mourn the loss of the elders in the generation that we did lose to HIV and I feel incredibly privileged uh, to benefit from their sacrifice um, and uh, I feel that part of my responsibility is to pay rent on that privilege. I'm, I am a young person who very easily can access medications with no side effects uh, and uh, as a person living with HIV my journey is about living long term um, which is unlike the experience of the previous generation. My name is Gavin, I work for Acon Health, it's an uh, organisation, uh, the AIDS Council of New South Wales, we used to be known as. What are you doing here? Uh, we're doing rapid HIV testing. It's a, a first for Sydney, it's a pop-up caravan that we have uh, for World AIDS Day, the week of World AIDS Day. Is it easier to get people to test today than 20 years ago? It, it is, it is. There's a lot of barriers that have been um, removed. Uh, and we're hoping that this rapid HIV testing experience will be that last hurdle that gets taken away and we'll encourage more guys to get tested more often. How do you look upon the Australian AIDS epidemic today? I think of it as a, a prevention triumph in some areas. We um, have fantastic health care and we have subsidised medicines. We have some of the best researchers in the world and I think the pe people know that and there's trust. But we still have a rising, increasing rates of HIV diagnoses and so we just have to keep trying harder. I want to see the virtual elimination of, of HIV and I believe we can do that in Australia. I'm absolutely passionate about that and I think we can do it and that's why probably the main reason I'm, I'm involved. Without these new scientific advances, I may not have been involved very much. You're a young politician. Uh, how is it to, to try to influence a political establishment in Australia today? Well, you know, on one hand we're lucky in Australia because we had a strong bipartisan response to HIV where you know, we sought to work with affected communities in order to, to have a good response. You know, and that meant uh, we got on top of managing issues like stigma and discrimination and a criminal law, but we still have problems in those areas and it's really important that there's a new generation of politicians that takes that bipartisanship and, uh, and you know, we uh, keep strong awareness and positive, uh, positiveness around it. It is uh, for me a great moment to be in uh, Melbourne and it is important for us uh, to say to the world that is not over. Even if we have been able uh, to reach uh, uh, 10 million people with a treatment, we still have 18 million people who are waiting for uh, life-saving treatment. <laughs>